Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Neoris podcast. My name is Javiera, and I'm part of the marketing team for Neoris. Today, we will be talking about something very important, the role of women in the IT sector and why diversity and inclusion matter. We're very excited to welcome Asadeh Hashemi, Director of Technology at the Home Depot Canada. Throughout our conversation, Asadeh will share with us some experiences and challenges she has faced as a woman in the industry. This dialogue aims to reflect on the opportunities and strategies that companies can employ in order to enhance the representation and participation of women in technology. Thank you, Javiera. Uh, excited to be here. So, Asadeh, we wanted to ask you a little bit uh, about your story. Can you share your journey to becoming an IT uh, director? Sure. Uh, so my journey hasn't been a typical journey uh, into technology. I, I'm a chemical engineer. Uh, I started my career many years ago as uh, in a refinery and really quickly I realized I don't want to do chemical engineering. Then I moved into a different functional area and uh, really quickly I learned that I like to learn about business uh, and different aspects of business. Um, through a mentor that I knew, um, I got into equity investments uh, for about 10 years. Uh, during that time, uh, we would bid on projects, infrastructure projects, ranging between $250 million to $2 billion. Uh, and I was responsible for structuring the financing for those projects at the beginning and then Eventually, my role changed into uh, direct negotiations with government and contractors. Then I had my son, and that job was very demanding. A lot of all-nighters, uh, travel across the country, in the, leave in the morning, come back at night, and it wasn't great for being a mom. And at the same time, an opportunity came up with Home Depot in their building services department. This is basically their asset management group where they, uh, the role was uh, to be a director of facilities uh, and look after all our buildings with a team uh, from an energy perspective, maintenance and capital planning. Did that for about uh, two years and then moved on to uh, a role within supply chain building last mile deli delivery capabilities for Home Depot. And that was for about four years. Uh, during that time, I worked very closely with technology partners. And given where the world is going with everything, uh, I think it's important for every leader uh, to be part of technology. But I was very intrigued by uh, just the idea of building new. And uh, after a few conversations with my current leader, I ended up uh, coming uh, to the technology side. Wow, you have a really incredible background. So I see you mentioned something about mentorship at first. So I wanted to ask you what what has a, how has mentorship influenced in your career and what advice would you give to choosing the right one? Okay, uh, that, uh, that's a question that's really close to my heart. Uh, I The way I moved from basically working for, uh, for an oil refinery and a uh, Uh, oil and gas company into equity finance and bidding on infrastructure projects was through a connection through a mentor. I met this mentor on a plane. Um, at that time, obviously, he wasn't my mentor. We started chatting and that connection kept uh, going on. Uh, and again, uh, uh, we continued talking and he became my mentor and three years later, Uh, I ended up uh, getting my role in equity finance uh, through him. And and again, uh, I want to emphasize, uh, for me, mentorship isn't about getting the next job. It's about a connection you make, someone that can lead you and help you in your career decisions that can guide you in terms of uh, being a sounding board uh, uh, when, uh, when you need a sounding board. Uh, I always tell someone, If there's a job posting, don't reach out to the leader saying, hey, can you be my mentor? <laughs> That's not it. it. There really needs to be a mutual connection and uh, respect and learning. Uh, I tend to mentor a lot of people in my day to day. I believe in paving the path forward. And, uh, and, and in that connection, it's important that both parties 
uh, feel like there's a fit, there's a match, uh, rather than it being strategic based on where you want to go uh, for your next role. Yeah, I, I believe like there's people don't talk about that uh, much often, but I believe it's it's great that you mention it because uh, I, when people are looking for new jobs or are getting into a new industry that they don't have experience at, uh, maybe at first they feel a little lost. So um, connecting with someone and having the the relationship uh, and the openness to to talk about it and guide you through the journey, I think it's great. So you you worked in many industries that are uh, pretty male dominated, oil and gas, technology. So I wanted to ask you what challenges have you faced uh, during these in these industries and how did you overcome them? So I think it's a journey. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting because when I first started my career and moved, especially in equity investments, actually, even though I worked in a refinery where I felt the pressure of being one of the few women in the room was in equity investment. Uh, I went and bought a whole bunch of blue shirts with uh, suits uh, and I tried to look like the guys. I went for whiskey tasting. I hated whiskey, but it was what the guys did. And I was trying to become one of the guys. And that was mostly because of my own ins insecurities in terms of being one of the only women or uh, in that space. But eventually I built the confidence and uh, realized that it, it that you don't need to become one of the guys. You need to be yourself. You need to have your own approach. And that's why diversity is even actually, th that's the most important thing about diversity is because you you bring something different than the guys. And, and it's not about whether you're a female or male or any of that, but it's about what do you bring to the table, your ideas, your thoughts? Uh, now, that's one uh, one aspect of it. The other aspect is, uh, as I said earlier, when I became a mom, I realized that uh, I couldn't necessarily do uh, fly into Calgary and fly back uh, at night uh, with a one-year-old. And that was challenging. It's so it's... Um, it, having the right frame of mind in terms of what you want for home versus work. But my career aspirations didn't change. I just needed to make sure I'm in the right role uh, where I can have my growing aspirations, but I can also feel like I'm still a mom as well. And, and I always uh, get asked the question in terms of work-life balance. Uh, and I always say it's not about balance. It's about uh, harmony. It's uh, uh, and it's about uh, juggling the balls. Um, and and I found that sometimes I had to do that more often than my male colleagues. But uh, it's also fun. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to to also create consciousness consciousness about that. Uh, we women and men, of course, they don't only have their job. Uh, life so it is important to balance the personal life with the professional life and as mothers i believe i'm not a mother but i believe they are like superheroes like they can do so many things uh, it's crazy like they 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 are always for the kids and they're always for their job so i think it's important to to spend to to say to tell the the audience that it's not to compete men and women, it's to complement each other. And how you mentioned it before, like um, everyone brings different things to a table and it's important to respect and complement each other and grow. Uh, I think that's what makes a, a team, right? I agree. And can I just add something? Yeah. Uh, I actually always say when I try to give advice to women that are maybe 10, 20 years younger than me, I always try to say, there's no such a thing as superhero, actually. Uh, and that uh, as much as it's important to try to balance everything, you can't do it alone. So if you've got career aspirations, figure out whether there's certain things you can outsource because there's only so many hours in a day. And if you try to be superhero, you'll burn out. So if career aspirations are important, 
uh, then look at the things that uh, that you can have the discussions at home. You can have the discussions on balancing at home as well, uh, because there the reality is that uh, no one is a superhero, and you just have to figure out different ways that works for you and your family and your work and your work aspirations and all of that. And I didn't want to contradict you. I do think women are in some ways, especially uh, moms with young children are superheroes, but I, it's also important that if you've got career aspirations that you want to go after it, you don't put them in the back burner. Uh, you just have to write discussions at home as well. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I wanted to ask you, how would you promote diversity and inclusion within your teams? So um, there's a few things. Uh, when I joined the technology team, I, uh, I started a women in technology uh, group. And through reaching out to partners, uh, it's really looking, how do you create a community uh, around this? Uh, so uh, obviously, this is around women in technology. Uh, but really, it's uh, by action. Uh, every person can make a difference uh, through their participation, through the discussions, through uh, action of organizing something. And even small things make a di big difference uh, because uh, uh, drops make an ocean. Uh, and I don't know if I say that expression correctly, but it's if everyone takes a small action, it becomes a big result. Great. So um, I wanted to, to, like, summarizing all of these and your experience, what do you think are the three uh, skills um, do you need to be successful in this field for, for becoming a director in um, the industries? So I can tell you that uh, there's no three skills that everyone has. You could be, uh, and, and in my case, the three things that really have helped me is agility and openness to try new things um, and willingness to uh, willingness to learn. Um, those are the things that have helped me in my career. But there may be someone sitting in a very similar chair and it may be technical uh, skills. Uh, it may be um, uh, coding skills. So uh, I think there's many skills that uh, bring people together. And that's the uh, beauty of diversity is that not everyone has the same exact skills. Uh, but what I would say is uh, one thing that's constant is ability to grow yourself and ability to look yourself in the eye and say, okay, I'm good in this skill, but I could still improve and trying to do that on daily basis. Uh, becomes important as you want to try to grow your career. Great. So uh, what advice would you give to, to women that are probably starting their career and maybe they feel a little anxious and uh, they're maybe deciding what they want to do? What advice would you give them? I would say do something that excites you. Uh, we do all our best work when we're excited and when we like our job and we don't look at the clock. Uh, so do something you're passionate about and that something that drives you to learn, to do more, uh, to make more connections. And don't worry about whether you're a woman, whether you're uh, from diverse backgrounds. Those things, they don't matter unless we make it matter in our heads. Don't let them be barriers. Uh, and any woman can do anything a, a man does. Um, and don't let that be a thing. Great. So is there anything else you want to add in, here in the interview? Would you like to share some other experience? Feel free. Um, the only thing I would say is, again, uh, from my perspective, uh, I think there's so much talent uh, that's untapped. And there is, I don't want to say there's no social barriers. They, they, they do exist uh, sometimes. And 
uh, interviews like this, discussions like this, they're, they're very important. But um, I was in an, another talk, uh, actually, for International Women's Day. And the speaker in that talk talked about hustle. Uh, and not in a necessarily a bad way, but with the, in terms of getting things done, being eager and having the energy to go after more and more. And I really like that. And, uh, and I think it's important. Um, and, and, and that's something I would share. Just uh, I basically treated every new role that I had where I had zero experience in that in those areas, like a, a crash course. I would cram at night uh, learning about that area, uh, whether it's listening to uh, experts in the area, reading about it. And, uh, and it's fun when you're learning, you're growing. And uh, it's like just being back in uh, university days. Yeah, I believe like being curious and liking to to get to know many things, even though if, if you don't excel at something, maybe you find something else and um, being able to to learn. I think that's that's the whole point here. Like there is a lot of resources we can take. We can uh, have a lot of mentors, as you mentioned, like look for them, uh, get formed. I, like I really believe like women today in today's world are really focusing uh, in their life career path to to grow right so well as a day i wanted to thank you so much for joining us today for sharing your story you have an incredible background and um, i believe a lot of women are going to feel inspired and mot motivated to to keep growing to to have the life they they want because it's working for the life you want right so Thank you again for being part of this initiative. We're very excited. And thank you for having me. Great. So have a great yeah. day. Have a great day. Bye.